Hey, and welcome to the channel ran by the guy who has no idea what he's doing. Today, we're talking about conspiracy theories. But there's a catch. Because these are theories I have very little to no evidence to prove. But I believe wholeheartedly, and you can't convince me these aren't true. So good luck trying. Yeah, that's right. Put your tinfoil hats on, it's about to get wild. Some of these theories are just... Huh, that's a different way to think about it. Others are world-altering, and there are a few that just submit my own stupidity. And before we get started, I cannot stress enough that this is all a joke. It is meant to be comedic, and I do not believe any of this. So don't worry, this isn't serious. I 100% genuinely mean that. But with that being said, I hope you enjoy. Tell me your own baseless theories, and thank you for watching. Starting off, we have JFK assassination to just kind of serve as the baseline to show how much of a crackpot I am. To quickly explain the official Warren report and investigation of the actual assassination, JFK was shot by the lone gunman Lee Harvey Oswald who fired three shots with a bolt action rifle with two shots hitting Kennedy in the back of the head and one penetrating the Texas governor while he was in a motorcade going through Dallas, Texas while campaigning on re-election. Something like that, or like one of the third bullets missed. I, for one, do not buy this narrative, and firmly believe a certain three-letter government agency that starts with a C <coughs> <coughs> was responsible. Uh, excuse me. There's a lot of holes in the official narrative, such as the impossibility of Oswald firing three shots as quickly and accurately as he could have with a bolt-action rifle. There's missing video footage. The Umbrella Signal Man. There's the whole magic bullet theory. Some evidence disappeared from that certain three-letter agency's evidence locker. And that same governor who was with Kennedy claiming he was not hit by the same bullet as him. I don't want to go into too much detail with this theory, so we're just going to move on. Because now we're getting into the more interesting stuff. Clowns. More specifically, remember back in 2016 when clowns were just kind of showing up all over the place and just doing stuff? Now how that was just kind of like a thing that happened? But no one really knows why? Well what if I told you the whole thing was engineered and caused by Warner Brothers? More specifically, it was a failed viral marketing attempt to promote the 2017 reboot of IT. My theory is simple. During the early productions of the film, Warner, who funded and distributed the movie, staged the first few viral clown sightings and leaked them online thinking everyone was going to get freaked out and scared by some creepy dudes in makeup and then announced, oh yeah, hey, by the way, we're remaking IT. It's coming out this summer. But what they didn't count on was that shit got way out of hand really quickly. I mean, some people got violent, mobs were formed, there were talks of a purge, Ronald McDonald retired, and I'm pretty sure someone died. The point is, everything got out of hand and escalated way too quickly before Warner officially announced the film, so they were able to just push off announcing everything and wash their hands clean of the whole thing. What's my evidence for this, you might ask? The timeline. The first sighting was in early August 2016. Before that, in July, the first poster giving a small glimpse of the new Pennywise, as long as promotional missing kids posters were leaked online to build the hype. Later that month, Entertainment Weekly released a full picture of Pennywise. And the film's official website went live at the end of August. Afterwards, the film's promotional team went dormant. Come September, new clown sightings were reported daily and panic was at an all-time high. By October 2016, there were talks of a clown purge set to happen on Halloween Eve. The movie itself released in September of 2017. When was the first trailer released? At South by Southwest in March of 2017. Is that too early to announce a movie? I'd say it's a good 7th month window for all the hype and promotion to be built for a late summer, early fall release. So why would they make all these big promotions and announcements and stuff to build so much hype, then hold off for 8 months before announcing a trailer? 
unless they plan to launch the trailer by late October to announce a summer blockbuster release for the horror movie about kids in the summer. After seeing the moral panic they had caused, Warner shelved the movie and held off on their initial announcement of the film until the clown panic died down over fear people would put two and two together and the public would accuse them of starting the whole deal. So Pennywise went dormant. While Pennywise slept, Warner Brothers got to work and began to lie about, change, and fabricate the timeline of the film's production. So no one will question why they released so much promotion for the film a whole year before release. I don't know. It all makes sense to me. Keeping the absurd momentum, just know that cryptids and mythological creatures are real. I know, take a moment to comprehend that. Now when I say cryptids and mythological creatures, I'm not talking things like Greek Titans, Egyptian Gods, Slender Man, that WhatsApp phone challenge thing YouTube doesn't like to have people make videos about, or anything like that. I'm talking creatures like your big feet, your dragons, the skinwalkers, kitsune, the Kraken, Ghosts, and so on. Now I know what you're thinking. That's a bold statement to make. You better have some solid evidence on this. Aside from the fact that just about every major culture, most of which had no contact with each other, had some form of these legends, all part of their folklore and their history, and they all kind of overlap in one way or another, or the fact that dragons are a part of both Egyptian mythology, Chinese folklore, English culture, Europeans, those guys. My biggest pieces of evidence here are lions and the colossal squid. See, in Chinese mythology, lions were known as spiritual and guardian animals. Specifically, spirits who would protect people from evil and negative spirits and demons. This is why when you look at a lot of Chinese architecture, especially older ancient buildings from back when they were dynasties, you see statues of lions outside of important structures like the emperor's palace or shrines. But here's the kicker. These statues are often thought to be depicted of Asiatic lions. You want to know something about Asiatic lions though? They're not native to China, and they never have been. While today, they are considered endangered and in the wild can only be found at the Gur National Park of India, before all of that, they were all over the place of Western India, all the way to the Middle East, in countries like Saudi Arabia. They basically, the opposite side of India from China is where they were from. That's where these lines that their statues were depicted of from, came from. And it's most often thought that travelers on the Silk Road came across these lines, heard some stories about them from the locals, came back to China, told stories, and they were eventually adopted into the culture. And you know what? I'm willing to bet the average citizen of the Han Dynasty didn't know Asiatic lions were really just big-ass cats doing big-ass cat things. They saw them as these mythical, powerful creatures. But on the other hand, the colossal squid is actually a relatively new discovery in terms of animals. With first real physical evidence of it being discovered was back in 1925, the first intact squid wasn't even found until the 80s near Antarctica, and the first living specimen wasn't found until 2005 just off the coast of the island South Georgia. But we start to look into its description, locations where it was found, and everything like that. Guess what the colossal squid sounds a lot like? The Kraken. That giant squid thing from Norse mythology that eventually influenced sailor culture through the 17 and 1800s and is now synonymous with seafaring. I don't think it's too far-fetched to think colossal squids were occasionally sighted off the coast of Scandinavia or wherever the hell the Vikings were doing their Viking things. And sailors not knowing what they were... And sailors who didn't know what they were looking at start making assumptions and stories and that with time just evolved into the legend of the kraken so when you take these two i guess historical lessons hypothesis theories whatever you want to call them into consideration 
I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that creatures like Bigfoot, the Chupacabra, or Skinwalkers, you know, all the others, are more or less real. We just haven't found whatever animal the legend is based on. Now stick with that idea of underwater monsters and riddle me this. There are a lot of independently ran, primarily donation funded organizations that work to clean up the oceans, you know, get all the trash and stuff out of there. But do you know any actual world governments that put effort into cleaning up the waters? And why is the answer to that question no? What if I told you that there really is some kind of giant Lovecraftian Cthulhu type monster or the Leviathan is lying dormant in the oceans and some powerful government discovered this creature within the last 150 years or so and convinced other countries to dump their garbage in the water hoping to poison it with the pollution of everything thrown in making sure it stays dormant. But they never told the general public out of fear people wouldn't be able to handle such a revelation. Yeah, did you ever think about that? Think about it, we got an island the size of Texas floating in the waters, but no one, no one decided to recycle any of it. Maybe that's what's keeping this monster asleep, is that island. I have absolutely no evidence to support this, by the way. This was actually an idea my brother and I were just joking about a while ago, and I've more or less come to the point where if I found any evidence to this, I'd support it, and I'd buy it. And to top all this off, we're going to talk about birds. They aren't real. At least pigeons aren't real. More specifically, pigeons in America aren't real. This is actually a real conspiracy theory about just birds in general, where people think they're not animals, and they're actually government drones used to spy on us. I mean, come on, how, how else can pigeons survive in every climate of America, from the tundras of Alaska to the tropics of Florida, or the mountains of Colorado and the deserts of Arizona? No other bird lives like that. No other bird can live through all of that. And if you really think this is a completely outlandish and purely idiotic claim, if you really don't believe it, then I have just one question for you. Have you ever seen a pigeon during a government shutdown? I know I haven't. Okay, I uh, I think that's gonna do it for this one. The, uh, the government hit squad's probably gonna burst down my door in the next five minutes or so. Uh, hit the buttons, get the word out, share this so the people can wake up. But in all seriousness, most of these are just outlandishly absurd and I think are really funny. And I hope you get a laugh out of these. Uh, cause yeah, I I did. the The button stuff, the uh, the likes and comments, sharing, subscribing, all that. Okay, bye bye. Love ya.